Hello, welcome to Zoonosis with Joy. I'm Joy and today we're going to be talking about glanders and its use as a biological weapon. So if you think about it, um, you know, you may have heard of bubonic plague or anthrax being used as biological weapons, but glanders has also been used as that. It is a disease of horses, mules, donkeys, and it's caused by Recoldia mallei, which is a gram-negative bacterium that's a facultative intracellular bacterium. It is spread from horses either through direct skin contact or through respiratory particles, and it can also affect human beings as well as big cats. Um, so this disease will cause ulcerations of the skin, that's called farsi, as well as ulceration of the mucous membranes. It can cause swelling of the lymph nodes, which is called lymphadenopathy. It can also lead to pneumonia, which can lead to chronic cases that last for years um, subclinically. Eventually, it can lead to septicemia and death. So this is a pretty nasty disease and, you know, it can lead to that subclinical carrier state where it's spread to many different uh, humans or other animals. And since it can affect human beings, it's also quite a concern from a public health standpoint that way. It's diagnosed through what's called the Mellon test, which is performed on all horses that are imported from overseas, at least here in Canada. It has been eradicated in Canada, United States and Western Europe, but it still exists in other parts of the world. Animals that test positive for the Mellon test are usually destroyed to protect the status of the herds. Um, for human beings that are infected by this, they put them on antibiotics for anywhere over two, three, four, five months, basically, of antibiotics. This is a pretty nasty bacterium and eliminating it um, takes a long time. So as you can imagine, something that's this deadly, that can spread this quietly, that can affect both humans and horses has been used in warfare in many cases. Human beings have known about uh, glanders, or at least have seen the symptoms of it since the time of Hippocrates. Uh, in modern times, it's been used, or it's been spread in a lot of different military contexts. The, during the U.S. Civil War, it was spread inadvertently by unscrupulous horse sellers selling to the Union. Um, the Union Army quartermasters were requiring large numbers of horses for cavalry, as well as pulling artillery, and for supplying the troops. Unfortunately, a lot of the horses they acquired were subclinically infected with glanders as well as other diseases. This spread to humans and horses and led to a massive euthanasia of horses. Indirectly, this led to the professionalization of veterinary medicine in the United States because they needed a lot of veterinarians to um, screen horses for obvious signs of this that would have been missed by lay physicians or lay uh, farriers, that kind of thing. And there weren't a lot of um, veterinarians before the war, but after the war, there became more and more interest in developing veterinary colleges in the United States. Um, Glanders became more focused as a biological weapon later. I mean, obviously, now that they know there's a bacteria that can cause this sort of thing, and with the modern knowledge of um, bacteria and causing disease, um, also, uh, before the development of antibiotics, this was a very attractive target for um, biological weapons research. So the first time it was really used widely in warfare was uh, Germany in World War I. The Germans were using it against uh, non-aligned powers that were supplying the Allied powers with horses. Uh, this includes the United States, but also Romania, Spain, and Argentina. Um, I think there might be some others as well. But in the United States, this was perpetrated by the German-American physician Anton Dilger. He was trained in Germany, but he was born in America, and uh, he felt alliance with Germany. So in a basement in Washington, D.C., he cultivated anthrax as well as glanders. Nice guy. Um, and he, along with a German um, spy service, coordinated a bunch of longshoremen in the East Coast to start inoculating horses with glanders and anthrax so that it could disrupt um, horses that were going to the UK and to France. Um, he eventually was found out. He fled uh, to Europe and in 1918 he died of Span uh, Spanish flu. Um, so kind of ironic. I don't know if that counts as irony, but anyway. Um, Glanders was also used in World War II. This is the infamous Unit 731 um, that we're talking about here. J Japan was interested in biological weapons research um, and using it against civilian populations. This, of course, included bubonic plague, which the Japanese forces used against uh, the Chinese population, but they were also interested in studying glanders. They did this by experimenting on human beings um, without their consent and uh, using torturous methods. They basically inoculated people, watched them die, and there is that. 
We don't know exactly how if it was used in the actual war to spread amongst the civilian population, partly because Unit 731 deliberately destroyed its own records to avoid being prosecuted by the Soviets, but also because the Americans granted them immunity um, and covered up a lot of what they did. So we don't know to the extent of how much this was used in warfare, but they were definitely studying it. After World War II, it's debatable if it's ever actually been used in warfare again. It's been accused that the Soviet Union used it against the Afghanistan forces, the Mujahideen, uh, during the invasion. Um, Afghanistan forces, the Taliban nowadays, uh, use horses quite a bit, and the Americans use horses during the invasion of Afghanistan as well. So it makes a lot of sense to use glanders that affects both humans and horses that way. The Americans study glanders uh, as well, and there's been a couple of cases of researchers acquiring it through accidental lab leaks and becoming sick. What the Americans are studying it for um, remains unclear, um, but it seems that they will, are either trying to stop the prevention of it or they may be developing those weapons themselves. America officially has no biological weapons program, but America does a lot of things un unofficially as well. So basically all this to be said that um, Veterinary medicine can be used for evil, um, that these kind of bacteria um, can be used for great, massive um, effect against humans and animals, and that when back into a corner, state powers will do anything to protect themselves, including harming humans and harming animals as well. We live in an age where the super states are on the back foot. Um, Russia is losing its war with Ukraine, or at least is in a, locked in a struggle. Maybe it'll use glanders again against the Ukrainians. It's hard to know. The Americans are descending into fascism and theocracy, so who knows? Um, it is one of those things that I worry about, and I think you should be too. Um, this is something that doctors don't really know about because they're more focused on anthrax and bubonic plague. Glanders has kind of taken a backseat with horses outside of um, the war machine nowadays, but it is something that could happen again, and I think there's you deserve to know about it. So that's why I'm talking about this today. Thank you for listening. Um, if you have any corrections or you want to uh, talk about it in the comments, um, you can type that down below. Um, I'm really excited for my upcoming horse course. There's still some time to catch it. It's about 10 days away uh, from now, so um, I put a sign up link in the description if you're still interested. Um, you can also check out the Memory School um, catalog because they've got a lot of interesting classes on there, so definitely check that out. Um, thank you for listening, and I hope you have a good one. Peace.